Hi, I'm Gray Larson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tune a tin whistle, also known as a penny whistle. This video illustrates information that I have presented in a book called First Lessons Tin Whistle. This is a, a book for absolute beginners on the whistle, and it's published by Mel Bay Publications. This is a Susato whistle their Kildare model, and it's the V series. V stands for very small bore. These are made by the Kalashek Workshop in Brasstown, North Carolina. This whistle is made in two pieces. It has a mouthpiece and it has a body and they're separate. They can actually be taken apart completely, as you can see. I'm gonna put it back together now. And as I do put it together, I'm being careful to align the finger holes with the window in the mouthpiece, so they're all in a, pretty much in a straight line. Uh, this whistle is designed to be played with the headpiece and the body just slightly separated, slightly lengthened. I'm going to show you if I push the body all the way in to the head to the mouthpiece, that's as short as the whistle can get. But by lengthening it, by pulling the body slightly out from the mouthpiece, the whistle gets longer. And as it gets longer, it plays slightly lower in pitch. Or the word you could say, it plays flatter. That's another word for lower. Sharper means higher, flatter means lower. Okay. So some whistles, however, are not tunable. Here's an example. This is the sweet tone whistle made by the Clark Whistle Company. And you cannot move the mouthpiece in relation to the body. It's glued or fastened together in some manner. So it's not movable, so you cannot tune it. I much prefer tunable whistles. They're much more useful in, when you're playing music with other people. Okay, so let's go back to the Susato Kildare whistle. Um, before you tune your whistle, it's important to warm it up a little bit because whistles play a little sharper, a little higher when they're warm, and when they're cold, they play a little flatter. So, when you're actually playing music, the whistle is going to be warm because you're blowing your warm breath through it. So you want to uh, get to that condition before you start tuning by warming the whistle. There are several ways to do that. You can just play for a while. You could put your finger over the window and just blow some of your breath through it for a while. Putting the finger over the whistle prevents it from making sound. So I'm warming up the mouthpiece. Another way is to just uh, put the mouthpiece under your arm for a while. There's all kinds of ways, but it's good to warm the whistle up first. The pitch of the whistle is quite variable depending on how softly or how hard you're blowing. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to blow very softly on the note G. And then I'll blow harder. And you can hear how the whistle becomes a lot sharper when I blow harder. The, the pitch is quite variable. Not like on a piano or an accordion where you just get whatever pitch you get when you play the key. So, as you can understand, this introduces some more complexity into tuning the whistle. While I'm tuning, I'm going to blow a moderate speed and moderate pressure of air through the instrument to try to get kind of in the middle of that range. There's one other thing I want to say before we move to using a tuning application to check our tuning. And that's, I want to tell you about tuning notes, which note to choose to use for tuning the whistle. A lot of musicians like to use the note A, that's an open string on the violin or the fiddle. And there's sort of a tradition of tuning to A. However, I don't like to tune the whistle to an A. I prefer tuning it to G or D. Uh, the notes A, B, C, and C sharp on the whistle are notes that are more susceptible to this pitch variability that I spoke of a moment ago, that when you blow soft and when you blow hard. The pitch of A is highly variable, whereas the pitch of G is a bit more stable, and D is more stable still. So these are more useful notes when you want to tune the whistle. So now we're going to use a tuning application on a smartphone to check the tuning of the whistle. I've got the whistle pushed all the way in right now, and I'm going to show you that it plays a little sharp. Of 
quite a bit sharp. It's designed that way. Uh, it's a good thing because sometimes you need to play with a musician who is tuned a little sharp. So it's good if your whistle has that capability. However, now I'm going to pull the body out of the mouthpiece a little bit to flatten the whistle, make it lower, and then we'll check it with the tuner now. That's very good. It's hard to get exact all the notes exactly to, uh, in tune according to a tuner when you're playing the whistle because it is a variable pitch instrument. So again, the G. Looks very good. So now I'm going to check the low D and the high D. They're a little flat according to the tuner. So I'm going to compromise. I'm going to push, I'm going to shorten the whistle a little bit to bring the pitch of the D up. This will also bring the pitch of the G up. We'll see what happens. Here's D. That's really good. And now I'll check G. It's a little sharp, as you would expect. So as you see, you have to kind of split the difference and do the best you can. And you're going to control the pitch of each note in part just by how you blow, by how hard or how softly you blow the whistle. I want to show you now what happens if I pull out too far. Now I'm going to lengthen the whistle further which should make the whole whistle too flat. We'll check with the tuner now. Here's G. Very flat. Here's D. They're all quite flat. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to that position. I kind of, I can remember pretty well where, how far the body was pushed in to make into the into the mouthpiece to make it play in tune. Let's check again. So I would say that's a pretty good compromise. It's very difficult to get every note on a whistle to register exactly on the needle, on the center mark on a tuner. It's almost an impossible thing to do, but you want to get as close as you can. And then You'll, you'll make adjustments. As you become a better whistle player, you'll learn to adjust the pitch of individual notes by blowing a little harder or a little softer. Now I'd like to talk about tuning the whistle by ear. That is not using a tuning application such as the one you saw earlier on the smartphone. This time, just using your own ear to judge whether the whistle is in tune or not. So let's say you're playing with a piano player. The piano is maybe tuned right on to 440. Maybe it's a little sharp. Maybe it's a little flat. We don't know, but it's not going to change. It's not going to adjust to you. You have to adjust to the piano. So that's a note G. So now I'm going to check to see how my G compares to this one. Again, I'm going to blow it with a moderate force in the middle of the range of hard and soft because the pitch changes depending on how hard or soft you're blowing. I think that's pretty close, but it's uh, a little bit off in some manner or another. I'm not really sure. I think it's a little sharp, but I'm not positive. So I'm going to find out though. I'm going to make it even sharper by blowing harder, and I'm going to see, does this make the situation worse or better? It made it worse. As I blew harder, the it became more out of tune with this pitch that's playing here. Okay, so that confirms my suspicion that the whistle is a little bit sharp. But to confirm it even more, this time I'm going to blow a little softer and see if I can bring the whistle more in tune with with this pitch. Yeah, that was much better. So I was blowing a little softer than I normally would blow. So that tells me that I need to lengthen the whistle a little bit. I want to make the whistle play a little lower, even when I'm playing at my preferred 
airspeed. So I'm going to lengthen the whistle a little bit. And once I do, I'm once again going to be careful to realign the finger holes with the window and make that all in a straight line. Now I'm going to try again to compare my pitch. And you notice that I blew harder and it got too sharp. I blew softer, it got a little too flat. I'm going to flatten it just even a little bit more. And it's interesting, my G is nice and my D is a little flat. So you have to compromise. I'm pushing the whistle body in a little bit to make it a little sharper to get those D's more in tune. That's a pretty good compromise. I can play all of those notes and in tune with this tone that's being generated. I have to use my breath to, to make those little fine tuning adjustments, but a little harder, a little softer, but I'm in the ballpark now. Sometimes you go to, you know, the effort of tuning like I just did, and then you start playing music with someone and you may find, as many whistle players do, that you're actually playing a little sharp because you're blowing harder than you did when you were tuning. This often happens, especially playing tunes that go in the high register. You need to push a little harder. So you need to check again. Once you're actually playing music, you may still need to make a fine adjustment. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you'd like to find out more about my instructional books and materials, you can go to graylarson.com/tw.